The Toronto Paper Company was the second major industry built during Cornwall's rapid growth of the 1870s and into the 1880s. In 1881, the shovel hit the ground and construction began on the Cornwall Mill, which was later known as the Toronto Paper Manufacturing Company. The total cost for the building along with equipment was a quarter of a million dollars. By 1883, the mill was established with 100 workers employed and the first sheet of paper was made. For the next 100 years, the paper mill would be a significant influence on Cornwall's economy. In 1919, the mill became Howard Smith Paper Mills Limited and continued to flourish. By 1943, 1,000 people worked at the mill, turning out 78,000 tons of paper annually. The next 50 years saw the facility continue to grow with million dollar additions and upgrades and new paper machines. 1961 saw the Howard Smith Mill acquired by the Dominion Tar and Chemical Company, which then rebranded itself as Domtar in 1965. In 1994, the world's first corrugated cardboard recycling facility was built. This was also the peak for Domtar fine papers, as 1,200 employees worked at the plant. The turn into the 21st century saw rising energy costs, weak markets, declining profits, a strong Canadian dollar, and subsequent layoffs. By 2004, the pulp mill was closed, resulting in more job cuts. The employee population dropped to less than 500 workers. A year later, in 2005, workers attended a meeting to learn that the Cornwall plant was to close permanently. The final whistle blew in March 2006, laying off the final 910 staffers. A few months later, the 120-acre property was sold to Paris Holdings for $4 million. Cornwall's population took a huge hit by the closure because it was the city's largest employer paying out an estimated $50 million in wages. Another period of immense population growth in Cornwall took place between 1921 and 1931. Cornwall's population increased by 50% during this period and part of the reason was the establishment of Cordall's Canada's Incorporated Rayon Manufacturing Mill in 1924. The arrival of Cordall's to Cornwall was a reflection of foreign investment increasing in Canada. At one time, the mill employed nearly 3,000 workers producing synthetic fabrics such as rayon for carpeting. By 1942, the mill's payroll was over $2.5 million. The early years of the 20th century saw the different mills in Cornwall thrive. Business was great, but a major issue came from this. The workers didn't share in the profits as the wages didn't increase. For three years, the Cordall's workforce would form a union and stage strikes. In the end, they won and were given a two cent an hour pay increase. The working conditions also got better. During World War II, Cordall's began to produce tire yarn, a strong fiber used in the manufacturing of tires and drive belts. This was to help the increase of demand for military vehicles. Over the years, and because Cordall's rayon market started to diminish, the company expanded and started to produce staple fiber, textile filament, and cellulose film, a transparent plastic wrap used for food packaging. The mill struggled even with the rollout of these different products. Financially, Cordall's was not profiting, and it would shut down for several months a year during the 1950s. Cordall's officially shut down the rayon fiber operation in 1992. With the closure of Cordall's and Domtar, Cornwall's air quality has significantly improved. For years, an unpleasant smell hovered over the city and therefore formed its visitors' first impression. Although city council would refer to it as the smell of money, that wasn't comfort enough for the people of Cornwall, nor did it help the outside perception of the city. Cornwall now prides itself with one of the best air quality ratings in Ontario. At one time, Cornwall was a real mill town. People expected and relied on the mills until they retired. They had their family to take care of, a house and car to pay for, but they never had to worry because the mill was there for them and later for their families. The city has shared in tough economic hardships over the years. Though the population has remained stable with 47,000 people, city fathers looked elsewhere to bring jobs to Cornwall. Situated along the 401 corridor between Montreal and Toronto, Cornwall has been a breeding ground for the distribution sector. Jobs have been coming back to Cornwall. 
And though the distribution centers may never equal the history of the mill's legacy, they have opened the door to new jobs for years to come.